Uh, okay, uh, now we move on to the next speaker. Uh, we have uh, uh, here uh, Dr. S. Sundararajan ji. Uh, Dr. S. Sundararajan, he's a scholar of Vedic botany and has authored two books on ancient Indian botany, Vedic botany, and the dictionary of plant names with botanical equivalents. He has established a personal research lab, Center for Research in Ancient and Modern Biology, CRAMB, Bangalore, and was head of PG Department of Botany St. Joseph's College, Bangalore, for nearly four decades. Uh, Dr. Sundar Rajanji, over to you. Please enlighten us. Madam Vijay Lakshmi, the director of uh, South Power, erudite panelists, and scholarly listeners. The topic I am going to talk today is slightly different from the other topics. All these things they deal with the food directly, but whereas my talk deals with the very beginning of the food and food habits. In fact, myself and uh, Srimati Vijayalakshmi had a talk about this because she had fixed a topic for me, uh, food and Vedic plants, if I am right. I told her, Madam, I have spoken enough on history of botany, origin from Sanskrit and all those things. With the result, what has happened is, whenever they say there is a talk by Sundar Rajan, it is understood that it will be ancient uh, botany. So much so, I have been recognized as the ancient Sundar Rajan. Because, you see, I, it is not that I started my research on history of botany only now. In fact, uh, when I started my research work on ancient Indian botany, mainly from Sanskrit sources, I was quite young at that time. In fact, I was not even 30 years. I will tell you one thing which, you want, which I very much want you to listen. There was a seminar in 1977 by Bharatiya Bhavan. Ancient Thoughts and Modern Sciences. When I descended down in the Delhi airport, it was a bit dark and uh, many of the volunteers had come there with the placards to greet the speakers. Everybody was uh, talked to and they were taken to the vehicle. I was just standing alone. Then uh, I just went in search of the placards and my name was there. I said, uh, I am Sundar Rajan. The volunteer said, oh, is that so? You are expecting someone very old. So this is the reason why I said this time, let me talk, of course, it will be connected to food and indigenous things. But I would like to talk about, as a botanist now, as to how this gathering of the food, cultivation of the food started, what were the events that preceded it, and what is the situation now. Now, my topic consists of three things. One is dormancy in plants and then human civilization. Of course, for many people, this topic may look as an enigma or a bit uh, incongruous in a gathering of this type because what dormancy has got to do with civilization? In fact, there is one word there in between dormancy and civilization that is food. I deliberately kept it out because let it arise some curiosity. Now, since uh, Madam Vijay Lakshmi was very particular, I should speak about the plants. What I will do is I will speak about food first, and then I will link this with the dormancy as well as civilization. Okay. First, let us. Hello? Uh, Dr. Manjit, sir, can you please switch off your microphone? We hear you. Manjit Singh ji. Yes, sir, continue. Oh, right. Uh, so first I will speak something about dormancy. And then, of course, intermediate right now, we'll talk about food also. And then I will certainly connect it to modern civilization or civilization as such that I will uh, do it. Now let us begin with the food first because uh, that seems to be very, very important. Now, just I want to, many of the students here, to do one thing. When they go and have their dinner today, let them have a look at the plate. 
as to what are the things that are present there rice or uh, wheat or many of the vegetables pulses and all those things let them ask a question and identify them of course when i say identify it is not botanical identification it is the identification to which they belong to to which group there is enough i am sure 99 point out of 100 percent out of 100 all of them will definitely identify all these belong to just one group that is the flowering plants or angiosperms so my question is angiosperms are not the only flora present on this planet in fact angiosperms are very recent visitors arising during the cretaceous period as gymnosperms and many other plants are very very ancient why did our ancestors they chose only continue you will know only majority of the flowering plants and not others now i think we should try to go back as to what made our ancestors consider only angiosperms for now why angiosperms were chosen over other groups of plants and if we say that angiosperms arose only recently were they not getting any food from any of the other groups of plants yes they were getting but because there was no other yeah there was no other chance but why did they select only this one it is because of a phenomenon called dormancy of course i'll just give you the english meaning of dormancy dormancy means something that is stupefied something that is in slumber something it is in deep uh, in a deep sleep etc what this dormancy has got to do with the kind of agriculture and all those things so for that to explain i need to go back a little bit and try to trace briefly the evolution the evolution of human beings you know in the first stage they are called hunters and gatherers hunters and gatherers means see when they chose animal as their food or a moving food they have to hunt either by their own hand or by some of the contraptions that they could make but here of course the moving food is always elusive it is a matter of chance who runs faster whether the hunter or the hunted many a time the hunter would run faster and there won't be any food for this and in the case of the plants is it clear it will be gathering they don't know they go to a tree they go to a plant on whatever leaves if that can be eaten or whatever seeds that are there they used to collect and eat very soon they realized this is a risky job because 90 times out of 100 they have to return hungry because if uh, one particular plant that they used for meat they get to update if that uh, uh, seeds and other things are exhausted when is they have to go in search of other tree but then what happened was this hunter gatherer stage itself had to change because the man who was a loner for several other things either for companionship or to help in obtaining the food and all those things small societies these this small this small society they formed a group and then they thought the obtaining of the food which is very very essential for the existence not only then even today if it becomes a matter of chance the whole progress will never be there right and then they said instead of hunting of course i i am no i will now concentrate only on the food from plants instead can we make them grow here so that there won't be any chance of running around or coming back uh, empty handed so they started agriculture so from hunter gatherer when they started agriculture obviously when you are in agriculture you cannot do everything you do require the help of all others so so then they learned how to sow the plants and of course in uh, groups and then food can be grown but even then what happened was because of the vagaries of the nature obtaining food was still a problem in an assured manner in an assured manner and then by then angiosperms had already arisen during the very early cretaceous period and then they experimented with uh, flowering plants and angiosperms also luckily for them it is not that angiosperms invented the mechanism in them and handed it over on the platter to the uh, budding and developing agriculturists you know in all other plants including gymnosperms there is no process of dormancy 
dormancy means now botanically explain it is a resting period that is mandatorily put on the seeds or any other reproductive parts so that if they mature and the season is uh, and the environment there is not favorable the whole thing would be a waste this innovation came in angiosperms and it is the fantastic significance i am telling you because when seeds are produced right they don't germinate immediately they they can remain for a long time uh, how long it depends on the type of food now i will tell you there are two types of dormancy one is mechanical dormancy and another one is physiological dormancy mechanical dormancy means the embryo cannot come out of the seed seed coat and then produce radical and plumule and all these things is it clear it will take some time now a little bit i would like to elaborate on this all of you have heard of parental care quite a lot in the case of human beings parental care is there in plants also because you see in the primitive plants also there was reproduction but there was very very little parental care so in order to compensate for this what did they do they used to produce in enormous quantities large quantities so that at least some of them will have a chance of survival right right when some of them will have a chance of survival when you come to high, higher level of plants they thought that in order to make in order to make few plants survive producing hundreds of thousands and thousands is a waste of uh, precious uh, raw material or precious material of the cells or plant whatever it is they went they went on improving the survival value of the offspring and finally the seed plants came into exist existence that is gymnosperms but there there was one problem with gymnosperms in gymnosperms seeds start germinating immediately but what happens is they grow very very slow for example there is a gymnosperm by name cycas it will be already 150 to 200 years old when it could grow barely about 2 to 200 feet right but then when the process is very very slow then they understood that in the next group of plants angiosperms what they do is do you see they used to store enough material within the seed itself for the embryo and the dormant embryo is not a dead one it is living it is in a slumber so when it is in a slumber it uses the stored food in a very minimal manner until the favorable season appear and then it is ready for germination this dormancy was a gift i am telling you not only to the agriculturists at that time but to the human beings even to this day also now what is the effect of dormancy now nobody can guarantee with the vagaries of the nature that rainy season will be all right and then enough quantity of uh, rain will be there and then precious soil will be there and fertile soil will be there all these things can assure but still even to this day very very unfortunately the farmer's life is uh, completely uncertain completely uncertain because anything and everything even for ordinary vagaries the plants will never grow now take for example the present circumstance itself in one case there is food starting in another in another instance people are throwing the agricultural produce because they are not getting they are not getting the proper price so here storing has to be done and that is possible by only the groups of plant that is the flowering plants there here for example suppose you grow about two quintals of uh, wheat or whatever it is you can use that but in the case of other groups of plants they continuously germinate so either you have to finish them off eating that year itself or the whole thing will go astray and next year is the question mark you have to wait whether everything will be all right and then being dependent on other plants he had no free time at all because he has to grow otherwise next year won't survive next year also has to grow if there is a vagary of the environment if the climate is not proper there would be famine so his entire intelligence was uh, devoted only towards the production of food and eating of food the question of storage would not arise but thank god or thank god whatever it is now they can grow what they can grow more than what they want when they grow more than what they want they can store so they have got lots of free time previously there was no free time at all and with the lots of free time human mind expanded 
thought of so many things. Skies, in fact, the first science that was studied by astronomy. They used to gaze at the skies and the glittering diamonds that have been put in the blue firmament and started developing uh, different kinds of knowledge. They started observing the nature, behavior of nature and all those things. And then agricultural settlements, settlements were properly made into villages and then improvements started and uh, full settlements were there. That is how the civilization developed. And so that is why deliberately did not use the food substances were there. And this is the influence of darkness over the ultimate generation. Because the mind became free, you know, food is a show. So we can divert their attention and it is to so many other. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this very informative talk. Uh, and uh, we, we are really grateful that you enriched us with uh, all the information.